Today I'm going to be demonstrating the decarboxylation reaction the most amateur chemists use to get benzene since it's not something that you can normally buy, especially since they go out of their way to remove it from gasoline. So this is a food preservative sold online called sodium benzoate. It's the sodium salt of benzoic acid, which you can think of as a benzene ring with a CO2 group, replacing one of the hydrogens. So we're going to use sodium hydroxide to convert the CO2 group into sodium carbonate, and we're going to liberate the benzene. So all of the sodium carbonate, we're actually going to have to have the sodium hydroxide molten for this reaction, so we can't use glass because it eats through glass when it's molten. Also, we're going to end up with a rock of sodium carbonate that's going to expand, so it's best to just do this in metal. Usually, amateurs use a paint can retort, but I've never actually been able to get my hands on a paint can to do that. So instead, I had to go with the other option. This is my steel retort. It's a bit dirty right now because I, I was using it for test runs, but over the weekend I did a test run and I was able to get 88.8% .8 yield, so hopefully we're pushing for 90% this time. This reactor can hold at least over the weekend, I was able to get this to hold 270 grams. I'm going to try and clean this out extra good. So this is just a 6 inch, six inch by 2 inch pipe with a pipe cap and a reducer leading up to 3 quarter inch fittings. Usually I use a wet rag here, um, usually about halfway down so it's out of the flame, so the flame isn't evaporating the water, and only the gas inside this is evaporating the water. And then on this end I usually connect a, um, probably shouldn't touch it, but I connect a, a gallon bottle. I have a glass bottle that I, I've been recycling the same water for every benzene run because it's saturated with benzene already, so whatever smoke and vapor comes over all gets condensed and I can, for the most part, get all of it back out. So this is the sodium benzoate I'll be using. Uh, this is five pounds. It was only like $35 on eBay, and I also got the sodium hydroxide at the same time. It's an equally boring looking bag, but this stuff comes as... It comes kind of in a pellet form, but not quite the way that sodium hydroxide pellets are. It's not as hard. They're quite soft. Um, a lot of people go out of their way to blend this stuff up and mix it really well. You do not need to mix it well. What needs to happen is just the sodium hydroxide has to melt and then the reaction starts. So what's best is to make sure that you have sodium hydroxide at the bottom and at the top and then in the middle just do your best to mix them but if you can't mix them perfectly it really doesn't matter as long as the sodium hydroxide is on the bottom and on the top. So I usually put a little cap of sodium hydroxide on the top. So I'm going to go get the scale and I'm going to start measuring this stuff out and cleaning out this reactor so I'll Go get gloved up and find the drill so I can drill it out. Usually I wear two pairs of gloves because I can rip one off when I spill benzene on myself and then I'm still protected. Little tricks you learn. And you can't see down in there. And thankfully nothing looks blocked. I'll flush all this out. Yeah, I'm going to have to go get the wrench. Okay. You can see the orange color comes from the byproducts of this reaction. It doesn't just decarboxylate cleanly to force to produce benzene because it's actually producing benzyl radicals at the same time. Those benzyl radicals can combine with one another to form a compound called bibenzyl, or biphenyl, sorry. And it can also form biphenylidine, which is a more dehydrated form. And then from the oxidation of those products, it can form benzophenone. So all three of those things are the major side products that contribute to this orange color. And they can be removed by simple distillation. So I've just been, been collecting all of the crude benzene. And I'll be removing it with simple distillation after this. So 
those threads down there. Oh, that's not threads. They aren't threads. They're actually, uh, it's actually charcoal buildup. Ignore my dirty table, I'm working on it. Tear out the speaker. Okay, I know you can't see, but we're gonna start with this huge pound, five pound bag, sodium hydroxide. We're gonna start by measuring out. I first have to get the actual bag. I'll use this. And I'll check the weight. Yeah, we got 93 grams in some shape. That's plenty. A little extra is always good. Sodium benzoate. No. I need 180 grams of this. Whoa. This reactor. Now I just have to get it up out of this lip. I don't want it all up in those threads. But yeah, you can see the reactor is just about filled up in the joints too much. This going. Show time. All right, let's turn on the gas and turn it up. You cannot fuck around with this reaction. You gotta go max gas. Keep the wind off. Now we're ready to. Alright, this is the storage vessel I'm using. That water is about 400 mils of water that's saturated with benzene and bif biphenyl, and it reeks. So I've just been using this wood to hold it up. It got dark on me in the past 10 fucking minutes. In the past 10 minutes, I swear, while I was waiting for this to heat up. But as you can see, once it gets heated up, it really gets going. So if we zoom in here, I really need to get the insulation on this. Alright, so it's been 10 minutes and I forgot to get this because I couldn't find the towel I was using. So you can see the reactor is starting to smoke. Alright, so I soaked the towel in water and wrapped it up around the end of this and it was sizzling as I did it, you can hear. We're trying to cool this down and I'll come out and dump water on this periodically every 20 minutes or so. Try to soak it up. It's pretty hot right here, it's like 120 degrees Celsius at least, my hand is burning. Yeah, you can see steam coming off. And this is cooking. Yeah, it's even baked off some of the carbon off of that cast iron. It is so hot in there. I might need to turn the gas down. And you can see the result is we produce a shitload of smoke. And this smoke, is, it's really a smog. It's fine particles of benzene and byproducts that are settling down in the atmosphere of water vapor. So this reaction does produce some water vapor from boiling off water that was present in the sodium hydroxide before. And you can see all that water vapor comes over as a mist and co-distills with the benzene and settles on the glass and creates a huge cloud that helps condense the benzene. We're not getting a whole lot leaking, but this towel is going to have to be a chemistry towel from now on. Because that little bit that is leaking is very carcinogenic, so I'm going to have to steal this. It's alright, it's old. You can see in just 10 minutes we got like an eighth or a quarter inch, like three-eighths of an inch, something around there. 
worth of benzene in there already, so this shit comes over fast, the first bit. <clears throat> Let me see if I can zoom in on the... Okay, we're 40 minutes in. You can see I'm just spraying water here and evaporating. Try not to get it on the reactor, but trying to evaporate the benzene in this pipe. I'm going to saturate this rag without dripping too much down into that bottle. It's alright though. I'll extract the water out, but water does dissolve 1.5% benzene by weight, so best to avoid adding too much. And you can see this rag is just saturated now. And the excess is just dripping down. Most of it isn't going in, but some of it is. And you can see we are collecting tons of benzene. Here's my pinky for scale. Lizzie, go! Jesus Christ, my cat just decided to grab the hot box and move it. I don't know why she did. Go away, leave the fire alone. I don't want her getting into this. This is mostly to keep the air out, but I guess I don't want her on this side. Okay, we're down to just a little stream of gas. Trickling out and an occasional drop. We're still collecting a lot of benzene vapor though, so I'm not gonna shut it off just yet. You can see we got a pretty good yield. Looks like at least close to a hundred mils, but I know there's more I can squeeze out. Maybe I need to add more water here, let me check. It gets hot as fuck. At least the Teflon. It was 38 degrees this morning, so I, I ran fourth batch since I had some extra in the jug from last time and some extra distillate so it's time to shut it off. It's been running for an extra 30 minutes longer than I needed it to but pain isn't the world's most expensive thing and benzene's really toxic so I'd rather get rid of all of it than you know conserve all the propane. So let's just let this stuff cool. It's very hot. It's still moist. Benzene jug. And allow this to cool and we wash it with water set it up for distillation like last time I need to buy some more clamps they're pretty much all in this kind of state where they're locked open and broken at the end Here's all of the crude benzene I've made over the past week. About a hundred and a hundred or so milliliters of this crude benzene came from running the reactor that I filmed. The rest of it was done off camera. So this is about 400 milliliters of it's been drying over calcium chloride for two days. It does not have a good odor. I'm not going to use a funnel or anything, this should be fine. You just have to commit to pouring in the lab so that it doesn't end up going down the side neck. And with that, it's time for power. And the condenser water gets plugged into the same power strip. 
And of course... Okay, there we go. Now it primed itself. I didn't have to do any bullshit. So this is my vac- this is my condenser pump. And it's spilling everywhere. Yikes, the hose has popped out. <laughs> now we can plug the water back in. And now it needs to prime again. There we go. No work done. I found out I have three of these. I thought I only had one, and I thought the tube... I only had one with a broken inner tube, but I just found this perfectly good one and cleaned it up, and it's good as new.